he was awkward and confusing and and sloppy and shameful and horrible and everything sex is supposed to be. Talking, talking with famous people. ISTJs and INTJs tend to be possessive slash controlling in the sense that they're going to they're going to provide their kind of solvency to their woman and she needs to be responsive to that particular attention be it site istjs are going to be excellent lovers very considerate or intjs who may be weird in the bedroom but um are going to be excellent at TEing their partner's life. Their their partner needs to be open to that to some extent, though. You brought up porn in one video. Do you think it's healthy? Without having any sexual experience, it gave me a lot of self-esteem issues, and I believed things that weren't true. I wish it were the case that people didn't encounter it until after they had had their formative sexual experiences. I think that would be better, for sure. I don't think it's good in the way it influences young people into thinking what sex should be like. In that regard, I think it's... People are getting the wrong baseline message. Like, more is... More is better. Crazier is better, you know? Um, and that there's a lot of performance ex expectations and requirements. It's, it's going to be something that particularly seems kind of offensive in that regard and the expectations for for performance and execution and stuff to NTPs who have a complicated relationship with SE. Um, but I would say that, for example, I have a perfectly healthy relationship with porn, which is to say... You know, sometimes I'll watch it and rub one out, but I get bored with it quick. Like, if I haven't looked at any porn in like a month or two, then I'll have this little run of like watching porn like three times in a week or something. And then I'll be bored of it. And it's just, okay, whatever. I've got other things. Bored of sex, basically. Bored of, bored of being stimulated in that fashion. So it's hard for me to think of it as being unhealthy in any way uh, in terms of my relationship with it. But in terms of seeing it as a narrative shaping device for people's identities and sexual identities and such, um, I don't doubt that there are a lot of self-esteem issues that stem from that. But the thing is, remember this as well. There were a lot of self-esteem issues for me that stemmed from growing up in a vacuum. It had nothing to do with pornography, right? Like, I, I felt very much like I had no idea what to do with girls, how to talk to them, what, you know, I, I had no idea why any girl would ever like me, and nor that I really had anything to offer. I operated under a frame of reference that said, I have no reason to believe, and I'm generally walking around with concern regarding the fact that if I get around to eventually having sexual intercourse with a female, that my penis will work as indicated. There's no explanation I've read or heard as to what makes it decide to do that in those moments. You know, it's like, well, right now when I'm thinking about the question abstractly, I'm not understanding myself as being aroused by the actuality of the moment. So, uh, um, this whole thing is concerning and confusing me. Because, of course, it's the most unconscious part of my attention, SE, and the, the SI experiential part, real-time part, is something that can really only be understood in the moment. So it's, um, it was a mystery to me and I, I was 
worried about it a lot. And I didn't know how to kiss a girl. I had no idea. Um, and I had no idea how to tell if a girl liked you or how to talk to one or, or anything. When I did start dating and stuff, it was awkward and confusing and, and sloppy and shameful and horrible and everything sex is supposed to be. Some people might say, oh, well, you get bored with the same person. It does not how it works for me. It's like I finally get really comfortable with somebody after a couple of years, maybe, right? Because from my perspective, it's my most vulnerable and intimate self. There was some point in my life when I was able to accept, oh, I'm not good at sex. Like, I'm not a stud. And Kimberly helped me understand this. And it's not because I can't be, it's because I don't want to be. I don't want to go through all that shit that makes, makes you good at sex, right? I don't want to. That sounds like a lot of work. Suck it, let me hit it, I'm done. <laughs> what about her needs? What am I, an animal? You know, there's, there's species of bison, right? They spend their, all, all their young adult male lives getting to be a badass enough bison to sustain a harem for a season, okay? Let's say they're going to fight off all comers. They're the big, biggest and baddest bison. And they ain't got that summer. They got that month. They're fighting off all the bison that come they're humping all the chick bison and at the end of that month you know what almost always happens they die why because they had to spend some all their time fucking and fighting i mean i don't want to be a bison well Alien 60 says, how how does this line of reasoning apply to FI and the last slot INTP? It means INTPs are better lovers. They're more considerate. And more neurotic and more insecure. Probably more infantile. They're well served by a, a nurturing type. Um, ESFJ, ISFJ. The important thing to remember is this. No matter how insecure you feel if you're a dude, chicks are even more insecure. And if they're not, then their opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> there are some girls out there, though, who don't think about it all. I tell you this. There's some dumbass chicks. Okay? There's some dumbass chicks. They're, they might be fun. You know, dumb, dumb, dumb can be fun. Young, dumb, and full of chewing gum. That male NTPs need to do it is think to themselves. Okay. It is possible. I could be a big stud. I can direct energy into developing skills that make you into a better lover, quote unquote. But if you actually spend some time doing it, well, like I realized when I started dating after my second wife. I pursued this chick that I wanted to get on. Now she, now she, we were both older. Gets a little easier as you get older, you know. The chicks are, are less uh, pristine. <laughs> More DTF, you know. There's this chick, my friend's sister. So I did the whole, you know, try to get on her thing. I Facebook messaged her and flirted with her and. So forth and took her out to eat. I banged her like a couple of times. But guess what? That story sums up like weeks of attention and energy. You know, what was it worth? Nothing. It was worth I got to bang that chick. Okay, well I did I did want to for a long time. 
<laughs> so that's good. But, you know, why even bother the second time? We're sitting at the table at the Mexican restaurant. She says this. I like saline. Eric says, cool. Would you like another margarita? She likes saline, you know. <laughs> Why? Because, you know, the wind, sun. That girl wasn't going to get super attached. That girl knew what she was doing, okay? She wasn't a girl, right? We're talking about a 40-year-old woman or whatever. She was an ISFP. And uh, ISFPs like to experience the sensation of sexual intercourse. You're expecting too much explanation for something like this. Isn't that weird how I was just doing that thing? Why was I enjoying doing that thing so much? <laughs> It was almost like I was mad at Rachel, kind of, the way I was thrusting myself at her in that aggressive fashion. But I wouldn't I no reason to be angry at Rachel. What's going on here? And why did I keep wanting to insert that thing if I was just going to remove it again, only to insert it again, only to remove it again? None of this is making any sense. That's what I think after sex. Actually, the first thing I think after sex is... Thank you for the sexual intercourse, Rachel. When you're with somebody for a long time, you get each other's rhythms. But I'm never going to understand sexual intercourse in an abstract way. Certain notions that one could say seem almost disrespectful. Um... Notions I would normally reject out of hand is not appropriate for two people who love each other. Somehow suddenly become appealing to me. Like, I'm not bossy. Right? By nature. I don't try to boss Rachel around. But then there are some occasions when I want to just be like, yeah, you do that, you know? This thing where you're driving around with your significant other and you get this feeling that's like you're irritated at them. Like, I need to do something to her or something. I don't know. Something irritating about her right now. And then you keep driving and be like, what is that? But I'm not irritated at her exactly. What is it? And you look at her and, you know, like you see her chest heaving or whatever. And you go, something just bugging me about her right now. I need to do something to her or something. I don't know. And then you go, you look again. She goes, eh, readjusts her boobs. And then you go, oh, I'm horny. That's what's going on. I need to hump. Have you ever had that experience? <laughs> I have. I finally figured out during my second marriage that when my ex-wife wanted to have intercourse, what she'd do is she'd position herself so that she was bent over so I could see a lot of her cleavage. And if she did that a couple of times, then I would initiate sexual intercourse. It took me a long time to figure out that's what she was doing. <laughs> Pretty clever of an ESFJ, though. You know, that's ESFJ move right there. Talking, talking with famous people.